So there's a brand new AI image generating tool in town. There's been a lot of claims out there that it is up to par with Midjourney and in some cases even does a lot of things better than Midjourney. So in this video, I want to explore Flux One from this brand new company called Black Forest Labs. Before I get into testing and experimenting with Flux One, here's a quick overview of some of the important details that you should know about this specific model. The first thing that you should know is that it was actually developed by many of the team members who helped build Stable Diffusion. Among the team, you can see our innovations include creating a VQ GAN and latent diffusion, the Stable Diffusion models for image and AI video generation like Stable Diffusion XL, Stable Video Diffusion, and rectified flow transformers. So the team behind this is a team of rock stars with a lot of experience in creating AI image generation and AI video models. The other important piece of information that you should know is that there are three models on Flux, and each one is a little bit more powerful, but also a little bit more expensive to use than the last. So there is Flux 1 Schnell, which is the fastest model, and it's designed for local development and personal use. Most likely, if you're gonna run it on a home computer, this is the model that you're gonna use. This model is also openly available under the Apache 2.0 license, so it is open source. Any tools that you create that actually use Flux 1 Schnell underneath can be sold. Any images that were generated with this tool can also be used non-commercially or commercially however you want. Then you have the next model up, Flux One Dev. This is their middle of the line model. It's slightly more efficient than their top of the line model and slightly more prompt adherent and performant than their Flux One Schnell model. Now this one can be used for non-commercial applications. So you can't create a tool that's using this and then sell access to that tool. And then you've got their top of the line model, Flex One Pro, which is their best model. It offers their state of the art performance and is really designed for enterprise solutions. Now, if you wanna use one of these Flux models, there's actually a handful of websites that have already integrated it and you can use it completely for free right now. Probably the simplest way to use it is to head on over to Black Forest Labs over on Hugging Face and you can actually use their Schnell model, their lowest end model and their dev model within Hugging Face spaces. So if I click into this space here, I get a real basic image generator for Flux One Schnell. If I jump back here, you can see we've also got Flux One Dev model. Both of them are just pretty bare bones. You enter your prompt, we can see where it generates the image and we have a few advanced settings like a random seed with height and number of inference steps. If you do wanna use the pro model, there's actually a platform called Glyph, which is this really cool AI workflow builder. And you can build your own Flux workflows in here and it will let you generate for free even using the pro model. So if I click on build up here, I can start building with Glyph blocks. We wanna start with a text input here. What is your prompt? If we want, we can even run that prompt through an LLM like Claude or ChatGPT to improve the prompt. So let's retitle this from input one to basic prompt. Let's go ahead and run it through a text generator. Let's tell it to take the following image prompt and improve it so that it generates colorful high contrast images. And then I'll put quotation marks. We'll put our basic prompt in there, close the quotation marks. Under advanced controls, let's go ahead and set the model to Claude 3.5 Sonnet. We'll rename this one from text one to optimized prompt. And now we can add another block to generate an image. So let's go ahead and create our image generator here and we'll go ahead and have it use our optimized prompt here. Under image generation model, you can see we have the option for Flux Pro and Flux Schnell. So let's go ahead and use Flux Pro. We've got nothing to lose right now because Glyph is letting you actually use this model for free. Let's go ahead and do a landscape 16 by nine image here. Now we can go ahead and close all of these down. And now it asks, what is your prompt? And what it will do is take the basic prompt, run it through Claude 3.5 Sonnet, improve it for contrast and colorfulness, and then output an image for us. And let's go ahead and just do a wolf howling at the moon and run this glyph. You can see it's looking at my basic prompt and then it's optimizing that prompt. And now it's generating an image based on that optimized prompt. And here's the image that it generated. 
pretty dang solid, honestly. I can actually open this step over on this left sidebar and see what the optimized prompt was. You can see it is a majestic wolf with illustrious silver and charcoal fur standing atop a rugged cliff, howling at an enormous luminous full moon. The night sky is a vibrant mix of deep indigo and swirling purple clouds, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see it got all of that into this. Now, I personally haven't spent a ton of time playing around with Flux myself, but a good buddy of mine named Miguel, who goes by Angry Penguin PNG over on Twitter, he has spent a lot of time with it. And if you're not following Angry Penguin, I highly recommend you follow him on Twitter. He is at the cutting edge of everything that's going on with AI. A lot of the information that I get before a lot of people get it, I get from AP over here on X. So make sure you're following him if you're not. But I called him up because I wanted to get some details from him about what Flux is good at, what Flux isn't great at, and what other details we should actually know when going in to use this tool. So let's start with what Flux isn't great at. It's not good at illustrations from what I've seen. Like it can be better, but I've seen like when people are doing like the fine tunes of like their SDXL, they can get much nicer things for illustrations. So let's try an illustration. We'll go with a hand-drawn illustration of an angry penguin. And this actually looks like a pretty good image, but it doesn't really look hand-drawn in my opinion. So I can see where maybe it's missing some of that detail. Let's try an oil painting of an angry penguin. And once again, it looks pretty good good, but it doesn't scream oil painting to me. All right, last one, let's try a watercolor painting of an angry penguin. Yep, that looks like an angry penguin to me, but it's got some watercolor elements in the background and maybe some splashes, but definitely the penguin itself is not looking like a watercolor to me. Not bad, but if I look at what Midjourney generates with the same prompt, a watercolor painting of an angry penguin, it definitely screams watercolor to me a little bit more or if I ask it to generate an oil painting of an angry penguin, definitely looks more oil painting-like. You definitely get those brush strokes like you'd see in an oil painting. I didn't see that as much when using the Flux One model. So I went ahead and published my glyph real quick and you can see it actually gave me a different user interface. But now let's talk quickly about what Flux is really good at. Is it designed to do realism really well? Yeah, I would say that the team did a lot of work on aesthetic training, right? And then just making sure that it produces really great quality outputs like right out of the box. I would say it's on par with Midjourney if you're using the right prompt. So let's test a photorealistic image. Let's try a photo of a man with a beard on a city sidewalk eating an ice cream. And it's pretty darn good. I would say our dude might be sniffing the ice cream more than actually eating it, but it's pretty realistic looking. Let's go ahead and try another prompt and let's do a woman taking a selfie on a tropical island with the beach in the background and let's see what we get. Now that's not bad at all. I can tell it's AI. It doesn't look ultra realistic to me, but that could also be the prompt optimization that I put in. Let's go ahead and build a even simpler workflow where we just enter our prompt here and then just generate the image. So we'll just put prompt and we'll have it just use our input to generate the image here and we'll use Flux Pro. And now we have a very, very basic image generator. I'll go ahead and publish it so we get that other user interface. And now it's not gonna optimize by prompts. This is going to come straight out of the image generator. Let's do a portrait of a woman in a corporate setting about to give a meeting. And we can see it generated a pretty realistic image. Now, when I use this same, a portrait of a woman in a corporate setting about to give a meeting, I feel like Midjourney still has it beat by a little bit on the realism here. These images look much more realistic, much more like something you'd actually find on a stock photo website. But they also kind of look the same. There's nothing that says about to give a meeting in any of these images where the glyph version, she's clearly about to give a meeting. What Flux is really great at is doing anything that has to do with text. So you can make like logos with it. They come out like insane. You can create like Snapchat selfies that look real. I was doing like an example where it was like George Washington crossing the Delaware and it, as a selfie and it came out like super insane. Just like little things like that. I think it's going to be really great for making memes. The text alone is something that we did not have with SD3. We really didn't have it with SDXL. Dolly 3 kind of does text pretty well, but Flux is definitely a step above. So let's do a polar bear holding a sign that says Mr. E-Flow. And it pretty much nailed it on the first try. I don't see anything wrong with that. Let's try this one. A plane writing the word subscribe to Matt Wolf out of smoke in the sky. Let's see how it does with a little bit longer text. I mean, not horrible. It says subscribe Wolfie. It's almost there. <laughs> but it definitely sort of lost itself a little bit on the longer text here. 
All right, so running this prompt one more time. This time it just got the words subscribe, but none of the rest of it. I think the plane looks a lot better on this one. Yeah, I would say prompt adherence is also a huge one. Aesthetic quality, the fact that it's like not censored, right, is like a huge thing as well for people that are creating locally. It is censored, like it does have an NSFW filter. So it's censored in the good ways, but not in the ways that, you know, you want to create like maybe a political figure just for fun or something like that. And you won't get hit with like a, a shadow ban or something like that. So I think just having that optionality is pretty important as well. Now, this one's also supposedly really good at prompt adherence, an area that Midjourney is not great at. And when I say prompt adherence, I mean, adding a lot of things into the prompt and having it get all of those elements. So for example, a three headed dragon watching TV while eating nachos and wearing a cowboy boots. If I was to plug this into mid journey, I'd likely get a couple of the elements. I'd probably get like the three headed dragon and maybe a TV, but it would miss the nachos and the cowboy boots. What's well, one area that Dolly three is really good at. It captures all of the stuff from your prompt and usually figures out how to get it all in there. So let's see how flux one does with getting as many elements into the prompt as possible. So definitely not bad. I wouldn't say this is a three headed dragon. This looks more to me like two separate dragons, but it got the nachos, it got the TV, it got the cowboy boots. Let's give it one more go around. This time it looks more like a one headed dragon eating spaghetti, watching TV without the cowboy boots. So, I mean, it's prompt adherent ish, but I'd probably put it about the same level as mid journey. When plugging it into mid journey, here's what I got. One with three dragons eating nachos no cowboy boots. Here's one with just a normal dragon wearing cowboy boots, eating chips, but no TV. Here's three dragons eating burritos or something. And here's three dragons eating chips. None of them got the three headed dragons with the cowboy boots, watching TV, eating nachos. None of them got them all right. Now compare that to what we get when we plug it into Dolly three. Check this out. Three headed dragon, eating nachos, wearing cowboy boots, watching TVs, even got a bowl that says nachos on it. So Dolly 3, when it comes to prompt adherence, absolutely crushes both Flux 1 and Mid Journey, but Dolly 3 kind of still sucks at realism. Now, the other thing I want to test is the sort of uncensoredness of Flux. Now, you can't generate not safe for work stuff yet. It's open source. People are eventually going to break that. And if you want to generate not safe for work stuff, it's only a matter of time. But right now, you can't do that. But theoretically, you can generate copyrighted images and use existing IP. And I want to kind of test that. Let's do SpongeBob SquarePants high-fiving Super Mario. And I mean, the hands sort of merge together, so that's not great, but we definitely got SpongeBob and we definitely got Mario. Let's see what happens when we try to get like celebrities into it. Let's do Tom Hanks hugging Kanye West. I'd say that looks more like Kanye West hugging an alternate version of Kanye West. <laughs> but that definitely looks like Kanye. Let's go ahead and do um, Tom Hanks standing next to Kanye. That did a pretty good job. The Kanye looks pretty spot on. Tom Hanks, not quite there. But the point being, it's not going to disallow you to generate whatever you want. If I want Donald Trump eating a donut, I can do that. If I want Kamala Harris eating tacos, I can do that. And if I want an image of baby Yoda hanging out with Spider-Man, I can also do that. If you want some additional tips for how to improve your prompts with this, A, you can use an AI method where you give it a basic prompt and then AI automatically improves the prompt for you. Or here's some tips directly from Miguel. Let's say somebody just wants to mess with prompting themselves like without using the prompt tuner. Like what are some of the things you've noticed work well? Cause I remember like early on with Stable Diffusion, if you added things like 4K and HD or Octane Render or Unreal Engine, or you know, you added some of these little keywords to the end, it would actually have a pretty big impact on the output image. Is there any like, little tricks or things you've noticed to actually get better outputs from the images? Yeah, so the, it does have a dual encoder. So you could use like the simple prompts and the more complex prompts. But if you really want like something super like insane, I would say try and be as detailed with the prompt as possible. Foffer, who puts amazing stuff on X, they are like always pushing the boundaries of the new and upcoming models. They have like some insane prompts that they're putting in, like very descriptive down to the word, like spaghetti monster coming out of a donut and, you know, attacking something. And it's just like super descriptive, super well. Like I'm looking at one right now that's like the word cat were the shapes of all the letters combined to form a cat using only clever typography. And it's like spelling out the word cat with like a cat in there, right? It's like insane what you can do just with, you know, really using your imagination to get something creative. Now, one thing that's really cool about this Flux model 
is they've already announced down here that this is also going to be a text to video model. So right now Flux One is text to image, but they will serve as the powerful foundation for their upcoming suite of competitive generative text to video systems. So pretty soon using Flux One, you'll have an open source option to generate the types of things that we've seen from tools like Luma's Dream Machine, Runway Gen 3, Sora, which nobody really still has access to. Pretty soon you'll have an open source version to do that with Flux One. Now, does Flux One really kill Midjourney like some of the headlines are saying? Not yet, Midjourney is still creating superior images. Dolly 3 still has much better prompt adherence, but Flux One is definitely better than what we're getting out of the existing Stable Diffusion models like SDXL and Stable Diffusion 3. And they're close, close to on par with what we're getting out of Midjourney in terms of realism, text generation, and getting a lot closer to the prompt adherence that we're seeing from Dolly 3. So this could, if it continues to evolve, which of course it will, be a contender to do all of the things that Midjourney does well, Dolly 3 does well, and Stable Diffusion does well. Dolly 3, great at prompt adherence. Midjourney, great at realism. Stable Diffusion, great at pretty much uncensored anything you can possibly dream up in your mind. You can do it without any guardrails, make whatever you want. Flux looks like it could be the best of all three of those worlds soon. Keep in mind that the Flux Schnell model is open source, so other developers are gonna get their hands on it, they're gonna fine tune it, they're gonna improve it, they're gonna rip off the few guardrails that it has now, people are gonna create LoRa's for these, and you're gonna be able to generate better and better images with it, all with an open model that's free to use, that's open source, that you should be able to download on your computer pretty soon, and run locally if you wanted to. So we're not far off from being able to just install this on our own computers, run them without being connected to the internet and generate anything you can imagine. So I'm pretty excited about it. Personally, I'm likely still gonna go to Leonardo or Midjourney or Dolly 3, depending on my use case. But I would say give it a month or so and this Flux model and whatever people build on top of it is probably going to be generating much better images than those platforms. So exciting, exciting advancement in the world of AI art. I'm super pumped to play around with it more. If I find even more cool tips and tricks and ways to improve my outputs, I'll make a follow-up video to this one. But right now I'm just excited that there's a new open source model to compete with Stable Diffusion that already seems to be better than Stable Diffusion. Again, I'll keep you looped in as I learn more. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you once again to Miguel, AKA Angry Penguin for helping me out with this video and walking me through what Flux is and isn't good at. If you wanna stay looped in with all the latest cool AI tools and news, check out futuretools.io and join the free newsletter. I'll send you an email to your inbox with just the coolest tools and most important news each week. And if you like videos like this, you wanna see more tutorials, news, and breakdown of the latest happenings in the AI world, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel. I'll make sure stuff like this keeps on showing up in your YouTube feed. Thank you once again for nerding out with me today. Really appreciate you. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.